Good afternoon. We're here at the American Library Association's conference in Anaheim 2012 with Nathan Hale. Hi, Nathan. Hello. Um, you're a comic book writer. Do you write and draw, or do you just do part of that job? Well, I started as uh, just an illustrator. My first graphic novel was uh, Shannon Hale's Rapunzel's Revenge. She handed over a completely finished manuscript, and then I got to draw the whole thing, which was a lot of fun. Um, now I'm writing my own comics and illustrating them my, myself, which is almost a totally different process. It's really interesting how different it is when, if you don't like the way a scene's going, you can just change it. Whereas if you don't like a scene, the writer's done too bad, you gotta make it work. So it's, I mean, it, it really works well. And both are fun. I like collaboration and writing for myself. So what are your new books that are coming out now? Uh, my new books are about American history. This is why I'm wearing this awesome outfit. They're called Nathan Hale's Hazardous Tales. And the Nathan Hale is referring to the spy Nathan Hale, the American revolutionary who was killed in 1776. But my name's also Nathan Hale. So uh, it's cool, you don't even have to put an author name on it. You don't have to clutter up the cover of the book with an author name. Um, these are all about um, stories from American history, true nonfiction stories. The um, premise of the whole series is that the spy Nathan Hale, when he's taken to the gallows, uh, stands up and before he's hanged, he gets an opportunity to tell a story. So it's kind of like a thousand and one nights. He is telling stories to prolong the execution or stop the ex execution from coming. So he tells these history stories and they cover, this first book covers um, the revolution, uh, everything that led up to it, and of course Nathan Hale's own story, how he got caught, what he did wrong, all of that stuff. And then the second book, Big Bad Ironclad, same premise, Nathan Hale telling stories, but this time he's jumped ahead a few hundred years, 100 years to the Civil War, where he talks about the ironclad ships that fought in the navies of the Civil War, the uh, Merrimack and the Monitor. You can see an exciting scene right here of the uh, the Merrimack just, just blowing stuff up. It's really cool. True stories, fun stuff. There's lots of good jokes and nonsense in there. But uh, the facts, the adventures, all totally true. How many books do you um, think the series will have? I will do them as long as they will let me. We're launching with two from Amulet so that people know it's a series. And I have already written books three and four. They're contracted, they're coming. I can't tell you what they're gonna be. They're secret, but it's American history. Do you have any other new books that you'd like to show oh, us? I do. I have a book I'm proud of. It's really an odd book, and I think when everything shakes out, this might be the most popular book I ever do. This is a spoof of Madeline called Frankenstein. I did not write this book. Uh, the wonderful picture book author Rick Walton wrote this book, but I was the illustrator. We teamed up and called ourselves Ludwurst Bee Monster instead of Ludwig Bemelmans, the author of the original Madeline. But uh, to get the general idea, it follows the same format, rhyming, and meter in a creepy old castle all covered with spines of Madeline. You jump ahead to the catchphrase, the ugliest one was Frankenstein. And this comes out this summer of 2012 with uh, Fiewell and Friends from Macmillan. And uh, we love Frankenstein. You can look at him, he ate the pizza. All of the orphans. I'll tell you one thing, I mean, the original Madeline, it's a masterpiece. But one thing that always bothered me is I could, I could never tell the kids apart. They were all just little clones. I couldn't even figure out which one was Madeline sometimes. So we went out of our way to make sure each of the orphans, um, their orphans, their kids, uh, are different. We've got a devil and a, a dinosaur and a zombie and a skeleton. Uh, anyway, and you kind of glom onto your favorite one and see what they're, each one is doing each spread, but we're excited about Frankenstein. Very cool. So, since this video is for librarians, can you tell us... We'll do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell us any great memories or experiences you've had with libraries or librarians? Um, I, uh, we, I grew up without a TV, so my mom would always trek us down to the library, and these were the good days when we could check out like a record from the library, it was all warped. I like to check out a record that had scary monster sounds. I think it was for Halloween parties, but I just listened to it and try to place each of the monsters. So I've always loved libraries with a good media department as well. Um, I had a great library in the Ozarks, the Springfield Green County Library. If anybody from uh, the Ozarks is listening, we like them because they had a drive-through. Call in, tell them what books you want, 
They just drive through and they'd hand them out to you. It was really great. But uh, my wife is a librarian, so I have to give a shout out to my home library, the uh, Orem Library in Utah, which also, I need to also include the Provo Library, which is the library in which I probably did all of the penciling and inking for Rapunzel's Revenge and Calamity Jack. I did in a library carol in my uh, hometown Provo Library. And if you could put your books anywhere in a library, what books would you put them next to? What are your favorite books that you think? My favorite new shelf is, and it's a new shelf, is that little short shelf you have in your kids section that has Baby Mouse and Squish and all these great new graphic novels, hopefully Rapunzel's Revenge, Calamity Jack. Um, there's a teen comic section, and that one's pretty good too, but I really like that kid comic section that has um, so many great kids' graphic novels. And I, I think the, the, the reluctant readers it appeals to, there's not a lot of superheroes, there's not a lot of angst, there's just all these happy characters that are that really like that section. I don't know what it's called, I just uh, know that it's, it's got the little stubby little graphic novel books on there and they're really cute. That's, the, uh, that's my show. <laughs> and what are your favorite books that you've read recently? Uh, recently, I'm uh, I'm a big fan. It's been a few years, but I always like to uh, talk about it because I think it's such a pretty graphic novel. Is uh, the Secret Science Alliance? Um, it's a super good one. Uh, I mentioned before uh, Squish and Baby Mouse. I really like those ones. I don't only read kids' comics. Okay, you got me. I only read kids' comics. <laughs> uh, a gorgeous series that's coming out that I really like. Uh, Fanographics Books is reprinting uh, the original Donald Duck. Carl Banks cartoons from the 30s and 40s. And the thing about those is the entire world got to, is, has been enjoying those for the last 30 years, all the European countries and everything. But in America, they just got buried. Nobody really pays attention to them. But Fanographics is making these really gorgeous hardcover reprints. And the first one, the first Donald Duck one's come out. And they're just really clever, really funny. Uh, Carl Banks was both the author and the illustrator of those stories. And he's kind of a lost genius. And he's just great to have back. So. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thanks for